It's on the cross here at New Marine Corps Memorial Stadium. Uh, we just heard the blue and gold, which means Navy walked away the winners. 10-6, great service academy game against Air Force here. Uh, Christian, this game kind of played, I think, how a lot of us may have predicted. Great defense by Navy, great face-offs by Brady Dovin Navy. Air Force gets, you know, a little energy early for a couple of goals, but that war of attrition, Navy just takes over, and next thing you know, fourth, a four-goal four, third quarter, and they get the lead and hold on to it. I thought Navy's face-off dominance in the second half was so important, you know, by my count, Air Force only had four shots in the final 32 minutes, um, and I think only one goal. So, you know, Navy's repeated possessions on offense, and they were able to wear down Air Force. You know, this is 930 Mountain Time start for the Falcons. Their D wasn't terribly deep. Uh, Navy ran seven offensive middies out there. So I felt like Navy warmed down, and the repeated possession was exactly what they needed. And now, you know, Tuesday night, uh, Hopkins comes down here, big test for, for Navy. What, what do you think we're going to expect there? You know, the Hopkins uh, six-man offense, first midfield, second midfield starting attack is brilliant. So they're really going to test Navy uh, at every, um, you know, in every position. So that, that and face-offs are the two things I'm looking for. So strength on strength game Tuesday, but for now, a great win to start the season for Navy. Welcome back to the studio for the epic IL game day, and welcome to the 2016 season. All eyes were on Annapolis, but there was plenty of other action in a shortened opening weekend. First, we go to Furman against Ohio State. Ohio State, four seconds left. John Kelly with the knuckle puck goal, just how they drew it up to give them an 8-7 to seven win. You know, this is an Ohio State team that last year lost their opener to Detroit. The offense has struggled at times, been inconsistent. Furman, a great showing there. Riley McDermott with 13 saves. You know, that's really good for a young program to kind of take Ohio State to the limit like that. But one of the big stories of this weekend is lots of standout freshman performances. I have Jeff Shannon here. Jeff, you do a lot of the recruiting rankings. You've seen a lot of these guys in high school. Now that you see them on the collegiate level, what did you see from this freshman class today? Uh, a lot of big performances today from a lot of the, the frosh. Um, we could look at Navy. Grayson Terrain came out with a hat trick. Huge day for him. Uh, two guys that were, I really were interested in was Tristan Rye from Lehigh, attackman, Canadian. I scored five goals today against NJIT. Really quick hands, really good off-ball movement. Um, I like uh, what I see out of him and what uh, they can do with him in their offense. Another guy, huge day, Grant Ament, uh, attackman at Penn State. Uh, came out of the Haverford School, was kind of their quarterback. Uh, comes to college and starts doing what he was doing there. Had two goals and five assists. That's a huge piece for what Penn State needs to do with their offense. Gets that ball out there, get that ball moving to a lot of their pieces. A few other freshmen to keep their, your eyes on, uh, Tate Boyce. Uh, started for Providence in goal, had 12 saves, nine's goal against, but you know that's not bad for a freshman. Uh, Timmy Kelly, one of our top recruits, uh, Tackman had two goals for UNC in their win uh, over Michigan. Uh, and James Burr, uh, Massachusetts attackman, uh, started for BU uh, this weekend and had two goals and assists, was playing from X. It's interesting to see him there. I'm intrigued to watch him a little bit more. Is he going to be their quarterback in the future? But really a lot of good, good performances out of these young guys. Another standout freshman performance, Jarrett Witzel from Bucknell had a great day at faceoffs. Bucknell won that game 13 to five against Delaware. That's been an area of need for Bucknell for many years now. So if he's kind of the answer at faceoff there, um, that's going to be huge for them. The other big game today, North Carolina versus Michigan. North Carolina doubled up Michigan in that game. We take you to Peter Kutrampas with that result. Hi, this is Peter Kutrampas reporting for Inside Lacrosse at Fetzer Field in Chapel Hill. Just following up on a 2010 season opening win for the eighth ranked Tar Heels over the University of Michigan Wolverines. It was a dominating performance with 10 different scorers participating in the offense, but it was a close game early on with Michigan only trailing 10-6 at the half, powered by Kyle Jackson's five goals. As the game wore on, the Tar Heels made their adjustments defensively, shut Jackson down, but then also continued to propel their offense forward. In talking with Luke Goldstock and Steve Pontrello after the game, both players seem to think that this team is just as powerful and diverse in its scoring punch as it had previously with former All-Americans in Jimmy Bitter, Joey Sankey, and Chad Tutton. Make no mistake, they're not replacements for those three guys, but they're definitely continuing on the right path so quickly after those guys have graduated. Again, reporting for Inside Lacrosse, this is Peter Katrumpas. That's it from the IL studio for the Epic IL Game Day video show. Check out the Epic scoreboard all weekend for the rest of the results, full stats, press releases, and everything. Um, also, make sure to gear up for this season with the Gen 6 Dragonfly Shaft, the Hawk sequel, and Otter Mesh from Epic. That's it. This is Jeff Shannon. I'm Matt Kinnear. Enjoy week one. Enjoy the rest of the season here on IL.